great welcome back to this tutorial series on algorithmic trading and investing with the darwin api so far if you've been with us we've been covering everything in terms of implementation to do with the darwin info api and we've completed the same we've covered all the endpoints implemented functionality written lots of code shared everything on github and we're now progressing onwards to the next API in the series, which is a lot smaller than the Darwin Info API in terms it's, it's, it has only one endpoint and that's forward slash quotes that requires a post request with connection set to keep alive that allows you to stream in real time quotes from any Darwins that are active, as in they are in the market at this point in time that you make a call to the API. And uh, we'll do the same as we have with the Darwin Info API. We'll talk about the parameters required, the endpoints required, the associated programming required, and the necessary steps we've taken to make sure that our existing code base that we've started writing since the Darwin Info API tutorials is still usable for this implementation. And if there are any changes that we need to make, those need to be made now to achieve two things. One, any existing code and any existing implementations should not break, and any future implementations should be possible with the existing code base as well. Before we do that, before we continue to the implementation side of things, what you see before you right now is an example of live streaming in play. These are five Darwins selected um, at random from a list of active Darwins at this point in time. And these include DWZ, C, LVS, SYO, and YZZ. These five Darwins are currently active and their quotes are being streamed live back into our Python environment here uh, through the Darwin Quotes API. So before we continue to anything else, let's go over to the API page and visit Darwin Quotes API. Uh, once you go to api.darwinx.com, click on the Darwin Quotes API icon, that should lead you to this page. Considerably more concise in terms of the number of endpoints to implement, uh, this being only one, and the forward slash quotes endpoint is essentially uh, one that requests you to construct a post request with the connection uh, parameter set to keep alive and your all your existing authorization headers and uh, content types being exactly the same. What you pass to the slash quotes endpoint is a data structure composed of product names. And we'll go into our code shortly to describe how to do that. But essentially you pass a list of product names, product name being Darwin ticker symbols, uh, that you'd like streaming data for. And if the Darwins that you've requested are active, as in live on the market at this point in time, the Quotes API will return their quote updates in real time back to your calling application. There are some API limits to consider that you can find on the DarwinX community forum written by our development teams, and those need to be taken into consideration when uh, implementing usage of this particular API. Now, in terms of implementation, we've had to do a couple of things to update the existing code base that's been written for the Darwin API in general so far, but has focused heavily on the Darwin Info API, that being the first API we covered. As such, there are some things that need to be added to that code to enable it to be used with the Darwin Codes API, starting with our base class, DWX API, where we've added two extra parameters, JSON and stream. And these invoke different behavior within this function that is exactly the same as it was up until the last tutorial video covering the Darwin Info API, with the exception that for streaming data, we require two additional things. We need to prepare our own request that was previously being prepared by requests.get in the case of get requests and requests.post in the case of post requests. For streaming, we need to construct our request on our own, prepare it ourselves, and then pass it on to a session variable that we'll talk about shortly in order to achieve the real-time streaming of quote data from the API into our applications. To achieve this, the stream variable is something that if it is set to true, will create this object and pass it back to the calling application as opposed to the other behaviors that would pass back response objects. So if stream is set to true, your application will receive a request object instead of a response object. Everything in terms of constructing the request remains exactly the same, post, self URL plus endpoint, your post headers, and the data. And it's in this data variable that we will be passing a list of product names that we would like real-time streaming quote data for. So that's it for the changes required to the base DWX API class. 
We've also constructed a new class as before, um, as we did for the Darwin Info API called DWX Quotes API. And in here, again, we leverage the base class. Everything else stays the same. Uh, by writing it in this way, we've now enabled ourselves to create more implementations for APIs using the existing base class to perform all the authentication and lower level functionality that we would otherwise need to re-implement in this API class. In this DWX Quotes API class, there is a function called Stream Quotes. And here we go about constructing our streaming application flow. The very first thing we do is we create a session object that allows you to persist certain parameters across uh, the session. We then create our data object inside which we specify in this exact format the product names and product names are essentially a list of Darwin's that we would like to send off to the API for us to then receive quote data in real time for if those Darwin's are live on the market. And finally, we invoke call API from the base class, passing in the endpoint, which in this case is forward slash quotes uh, sent to the quotes API. And uh, that then passes the data on to the call API function. And since we've set stream to true, we will receive a request object in response as opposed to a response object that we did prior with the Darwin Info API implementations. Finally, we use our session to send the prepared request off to the API, setting stream to true and verify to true. This then creates the stream for us. And as data drops into this stream, we can yield this data out and do something with it. That is essentially the streaming functionality all implemented in a few lines of code here in this function. The next part of this code is processing the stream. And there are two things that we need to do here. Processing is solely dependent on what you would like to consider as processing. For our examples case here, Processing implies storing the data somewhere, and if we'd like to plot it, being able to plot it at the same time, but in real time. And that real time plotting introduces considerations in terms of programming that we need to consider when doing real time plotting. And several different libraries exist for real time plotting and real time animation. Matplotlib, for instance, has that functionality available to it too in the form of animation classes. But for this implementation, we will be updating a matplot matplotlib figure in real time without using the animation functionality. Streaming is also possible with Plotly uh, that requires you to uh, be authenticated and have tokens for each trace that you plot on your charts. So for this implementation, we thought that matplotlib was the fastest, easiest and open source way to go about demonstrating how to treat live streaming data for plotting purposes in your application. The actual implementation of that graphic logic will cover in part two of this tutorial. For now, we'll keep our discussion specific to the actual implementation and what we're going to achieve with it in terms of data storage. Part two will then cover visualization. In terms of data storage, this implementation is very simple. We create ourselves an empty data frame that contains as many columns as there are Darwin's in our list of symbols that we've requested for the API to stream back to us. And we then go ahead and start populating it with rows of data as and when new ticks come in. In terms of programming, what you need to consider here is that at any given point in time, each Darwin won't have a quote update. The quote updates happen as the quote updates itself. So we need to take that into consideration. And if we're going to use a data frame as our structure here, we need to make sure that we populate it with some value, even if there's no uh, quote update for that specific Darwin at this point in time. Now, at the onset, this may look quite wasteful because we're populating a data frame with possibly duplicate values or redundant values or, or NANDs just for the sake of it in order to maintain a data frame structure. But the idea behind using a data frame here is that when we get to the visualization section, we would like to plot in real time the behavior of the Darwin. And for that, we'll need access to its most recent values and we'll also be, need to be able to present it on a time-oriented axis. So therefore, by using a data frame and populating it with previous values, if new quote updates haven't happened yet, we're following the same protocol that we would when implementing, say, bid ask retrieval functionality in code to do with some algorithmic trading strategy or the other. And for that reason, the data frame uh, is a decent choice for this implementation. Once the quote data is received, 
received, we go ahead and create an entry point for it. And for all the other Darwins that don't have data at that point in time, we fill in the most recent value, forward filling first, back filling next. And that's pretty much it. The stream components come into play. After that, if once we've stored the data, uh, which is inside a variable called self dot underscore df, if we require plotting, if plot is set to true, then we go ahead and execute the custom function that we've written, which is also available to you as an update to DWX graphics helpers that we'll discuss in part two of this video next. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers, and friends, and do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.